Welcome back. Well, we are drawing toward the close of the Sundance Film Festival, but sometimes the most poignant and enjoyable moments happen when we're a little tired, we just relax a little bit, a little bit less of the pressure that happens throughout the festival as everyone is rushing around town to try and make all of their appointments. And so this morning, I am very pleased to have a conversation about a film that has, I believe, has been needed to be made, and I'm pretty sure that Pascal Lamche will agree with me the phrase a controversial figure hopefully that's the last time we will use that phrase during the conversation Winnie Madikizela Mandela is the subject of this documentary there is so much to be learned I am here with the filmmaker Pascal Lamche good morning how good morning. are you so nice, nice, to, nice meet to meet you, you. Thank, you thank you for you being for here me. congratulations on the film thank you I I loved uh, a quote that I saw in an interview of yours about the film that I read and as we know very strong reactions from the most unlikely of places a, a kid who grew up in the Iowa farmlands who as soon as I was aware of this film said oh yeah you know well Winnie Mandela she was blank and uh, fill in the blank and a lot of people have these strong opinions I loved what you said about as the Italians say, basta, <laughs> now we make this film because that's where the answers lie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, I always found it strange that when I was in dinner parties in, you know, in Paris, London, New York, even Amsterdam, people, when they discovered that I was interested in making a film about Winnie, said, but why? She's a, you know, she's a, she's, I mean, unmentionable names. Right, and the book is made on her. her. It's you know, like, we really, know. Yes. And yet I knew that in South Africa she was a deeply revered and loved figure. And you know, she was a female figure, powerful figure, political figure. I'd interviewed her husband, Nelson Mandela, uh, for a couple of films that I made. And he was, of course, you know, godlike. And yeah. it was a great honor to meet him and spend time with him, etc. But I always thought about, well, what is this, you know, this, there's this woman, his ex-wife, back there in the shadows. And it seemed to me history has often had these female figures who become very powerful and then are in some way kind of taken down. And I sort of instinctively thought there was a story there that needed um, uh, investigating and digging out. Um, and also, you, you know, needed to be well made. Um, this isn't a journalistic film, although there is a very investigative side to it. Um, because I had to dig deep amongst people who don't normally get interviewed, etc. And it, you've made a film in the early 2000s, I think, is, is yes. in that area about Nelson Mandela. So you've, in some ways, you've been living with this subject matter for a very long time. I have. I mean, I went to South Africa in the first uh, instance to work with a photographer who'd been working for 10 years documenting. He'd just been filming hundreds of hours um, in Soweto, this kind of scattershot approach. And he was kind of almost going mad trying to make a film out of it, which then we made together. And that traced a family through from the point at which Nelson Nelson was released in 1992-2000. And it was a film about this idea of the rainbow nation, you know, that um, democracy and, and the end of apartheid had really changed things fundamentally for the majority of essentially black South Africans. Um, so that was the start of the journey. And in, in a way, Winnie now is, is the end of that journey, my journey of discovery and, and understanding um, of what was a really phenomenal um, part of our contemporary history because it still shocks me today that that kind of system could have existed for so long until 1994. I mean, you know, my son was born by that point. I mean, you know, this is in our contemporary culture. Um, uh, so yes, I, th I thought it was an important film to make. It's 2017, we are still, we are having marches across the entire nation, across the entire world. Yeah. Uh, women's rights women's equality. Talk about this powerful woman and, and your experience and how you were changed in making these discoveries and having these many, many conversations. And I, I suppose on some level, of, although cliche, really true, truly getting to know this person. Well, um, for me, obviously as a woman, as, as a woman filmmaker, um, I had a particular interest, uh, quite apart from wanting to uncover a story that hadn't been told, 
um, somewhere inevitably I was interested in, in the fact that she was a powerful figure but that she'd been so easily undermined um, and there was a st of course there was some very serious criminal investigations that was a serious way in which she was taken down and I the film investigates that uh, and exonerates her completely um, as the trials did at the time um, but on another level, um, what really interested me that I discovered in the making of the film was that it really only takes the, a little leak to the press of a lover, you know, to t really significantly take down a, um, a, a woman in particular, a wife. Um, and um, so that had, of course, a kind of a feminist aspect to it. What are these double standards that are applied? Yes, between um, men and women and sort of political figures or, or, or um, you know, even celebrity figures, I suppose, on one level. And in this story, it's quite complicated because it's both sides of the apartheid divide who become, um, who oppose her and, and find ingenious ways uh, to, uh, to neutralize her, her, her considerable power. And without any intent of being silly about it, Two strikes, a woman <laughs> and a black South African, and yet we're still talking about someone who had such an amazing impact on, on that journey, as you say, toward the end of apartheid and, and, and continuing to be a free person yes. despite these trials, et cetera. Well, she's also still, yes, well, she's, st she's still a political figure in South Africa because she's still in parliament, and she just recently turned 80, and she's this sort of, She's so without great. being a grand dame, you know, calm down. Yeah, 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 sure, she sure. has this <laughs> phenomenal charisma. And, um, and now, because South Africa's been in turmoil for a good, I mean, more than a couple of years, but the protests that are more and more regular, I mean, there's thousands of them every year. Um, because, of course, this, um, this great dream that uh, Nelson Mandela represented, that Winnie represented until she was ostracized and de demonized, really, um, has never been delivered. And, and that's sort of the tragedy of the situation there now. And so um, the student movement, young people um, in education, etc., cetera, in, in higher education are protesting for everybody. And I think it's important that this film is seen not just as a, as a film that uncovers a, a figure that was his, hidden from history, but um, also says something about contemporary South Africa today. And, and such a, a an important point in as much as we look to, to political changes like the end of the policy known as apartheid, but the fact that reality is that times change very slowly. Yeah. And to just make this one pronouncement, which is of course very, very important, and sim but also symbolic yeah. in a way. Let's do this. Should we take a little look at, we've got some film Great. that we can enjoy for just one moment. Lovely. This is Winnie. <laughs> Those eyes, the intensity. <laughs> I can only imagine what it must have been like to be in the edit suite oh. with all of these photos as you're assembling and, and putting the, the visual part of this film together. One thing I wanted to ask you about, because you mentioned the process of going and getting people to talk, as yes. they say, people who were a, a part of this time, a part of this journey that Winnie Mandela took. Talk a little bit about the challenges of, of that that is, is always, I think, part of documentary filmmaking. Yes. Well, one challenge was that I interviewed a lot of people who'd been um, close to Winnie, her soldiers, because she was a commander in the military wing of the ANC, et cetera. So there were you know, many, many people, 30, 35 interviews, in fact, that I didn't end up using in the film at all. Um, because what then took a lot of space is what actually you don't see in that, that trailer, which is the people um, on the apartheid side um, who were working for the state and who um, mounted a whole psychological warfare program, Absolutely. which was initiated by President Bodo, who you do see in the, in the trailer, um, and for whom you know the, the chips were down now. This was the last ditch attempt to try and save their system. Um, stave off change. And stave off change, yeah. And so um, I managed to fa find, um, and working with an investigative journalist who was a, who's an Africana um, guy who was in journalism before the transition. And he helped me find a lot of these quite spooky characters, frankly, who'd never spoken before. 
Um, and that took some work, you know, to get them to want to share what they were actually very proud of, which was their contribution to crushing <laughs> the resistance. Um, um, and they were very ingenious in, in, in doing that. Um, but that's part of the exciting part, I think, actually also of the film, because, um, you know, obviously talking with Winnie was, was phenomenal. And that also was a challenge because um, I'd wanted, it's, it's, it's difficult, you don't want to make a puff piece about anybody, any subject, sure, if sure, you're a sure. serious documentary filmmaker, and you don't either want um, to allow them too much space to render their own narrative. Right, you know. and, to, and to rewrite history yes, a little bit. it's as not I, a revisionist thing. As I re yeah. recollected, and we talked about the popular film Rememory is buzzed about here at Sundance, yes. and, and some of the data that went behind the writing of that script, a large percentage of what we call our memories are created out of a tiny little piece could be a then, photograph, could be a story, something yes. that, you know, and, and, and inevitably we always sort of buff <laughs> our, <laughs> you know, the, the, the past, buff it up a bit. But um, with Winnie, because I interviewed her four times and we had over two years and we had these very long conversations. Um, and in the film you see her from the first interview when she's still in Widow's Weeds because Nelson has died. Yes. Um, and in her last interview, and we hear her in between as well, but she changed over the course of that time and uh, the, the, the relationship with me deepened. I began showing her material that I'd found. I didn't show her the interviews with the um, with her enemies. I didn't I didn't put her face to face in that sort of situation. It was more, well here's something that you went through in 1997 or here's right. something you went through in 1985 so she could look at it and then remember and comment and I think that's why you get very close to her emotional core as well as her political, obviously, stance. right, and some and of the sort of the script that we pro we all write for ourselves, yes. and we all sort of try to act out. But at some point, that that drains away if, if over enough time to be with someone, yes. to just be, and then have those conversations. And then, of course, in the editing room, you're looking very, very carefully to ensure that that's. I mean, you know, you're putting together a story. You want someone to be as real as they possibly can be. And invariably, if you put a camera in front of anybody, <laughs> I know you look, <laughs> but I find it a challenge. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. I, I know that, that you've premiered, as you said, yeah. <laughs> quite some time ago. Do you have additional screenings before the end of the festival? We do, today um, and tomorrow. So there are two more opportunities to, to see the film and then you know, hopefully, I mean, things are being negotiated at the moment, so hopefully it, it will be, we'll be able to see, you'll be able to see it. Yes, 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 yes. You yes. know, the full version well, rather than uh, the little trailer. Uh, uh, a guarded pre-congratulations on a distribution opportunity for this film for so many of us to be able to see and, and to think about our own recollections and reactions to this very powerful person who, it's time to step out of the shadows. Thank you very much for inviting so me. So nice to meet you, Pascal. Thank you for coming. The film is Winnie. The filmmaker is Pascal Lamche. We look forward to seeing distribution for this film and seeing the film itself. We'll be right back after this.